Welcome. In this session, we're going to conduct a, a ratio analysis on a company by the name of Dactronics, and they're in the electronic scoreboard business. You know, you might find one of those like in an athletic field or a stadium, and you probably have seen this company signs all all over the place uh, if you've gone to any games or anything. So let's get started. And uh, first thing I want to do is explain what I have here. Th these are the financial statements I downloaded off the company's website. Um, and you have to start out here as a balance sheet and we also have an income statement in back of that. And these are the principal financial statements we're going to use for our ratio analysis. We'll get into a few others a little later. But this is what we're going to start out with and let me explain a little bit what's on the balance sheet. The balance sheet includes all of our economic resources used in the business and those are known as assets. And we have those divided up between current assets, or those that uh, are used in a year. And we also have other assets that are longer term that are used up um, in more than a period. So that's what we have down below here. Below that, we have our liabilities and shareholders' equity. And what that represents is how we finance those economic resources that are our assets up above. Those are our principal ways of financing our, our assets. So you can see here we got a breakdown um, between current liabilities, just like we had current assets, and long-term liabilities down below that. And then below that we have the other way we can finance assets, and that's through shareholders' equity, or what the owners contribute to the company. Okay, and then we also have our income statement is also known as a statement of operations and that's what we have here and basically what this list is revenue and expense and then you get down to the bottom and you have the bottom line net income or loss okay so that's what we're going to work with let's get started on our ratio analysis and let me bring back my little spreadsheet here so we can get started and the first one we're going to do is called the current ratio and current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So let's start in by putting a, an equal sign in the cell. That means we're going to do a calculation. And we've got to find our current assets and current liabilities. So we've got our balance sheet right behind here. And here's our current assets. So let's highlight current assets. We'll go back to our spreadsheet and put in this number 203065. Can't type too good today. And let's see, now we're going to divide that, and we do that with a slash mark. And if we go down to our liability section of the balance sheet, we can highlight the line here that has current liabilities. And we're going to put the 87,494 in our formula and hit enter. And we have our current ratio for 2010. So now the next thing we want to do is go back up to the top and do the same thing for um, 2009. So if I highlight our current assets again, we see we have 206,973,000. And we can put that in our formula here. We have 206,973,000 divided by our current liabilities. And if we drop down to our current liabilities, we see we have... 99,568,000, so let's put that in, divided by 99,568,000, we hit our enter, okay, so we have our current ratio for two years, and we can see that it's improving because it's increasing, that doesn't always have to be the case, but I'll explain that later, okay, so let's do the next one, which is called our quick ratio, and basically the quick ratio is the same as the current at, at current ratio except it excludes inventory because inventory is the most or the least liquid asset in current assets. Let's go back up to current assets here and we find our inventory line and okay so that's a pretty good sized number out of that total and um, we're going to remove that from our current assets. So I think what I'll do here is I'll just copy the current ratio for both years 
onto the next line and we'll just adjust our formula. What we have to do is subtract out that 35,673 from our current assets. So I have to put in a parenthesis here because we have to tell Excel what operation to do first and we can do that by putting in the parentheses. So we have 35,673 that we're going to subtract out of our current assets, close our parentheses. So it does that part of the operation first. And now we can hit enter and we have our quick ratio. Okay, so we do the same thing for 2009. We come down here. We can put in our parentheses. And we want to subtract out the 51,400,000 that's highlighted for 2009. So let's do that. 51,4. And put in our parentheses and hit enter and we have our quick ratio and that makes sense because quick ratio should be less than current assets because we removed uh, a big part our, our inventories from our total current assets so it should be less than current ratio okay and normally what we would want to do is also have another column out here where we might compare with the industry average or the, or the quick ratios and the current ratios for the industry as opposed to, to just for Dactronics. We can tell, you know, what direction we're moving in, but we really can't compare with other companies in the same industry. And so that's the benefit of having another column here. And I don't want to complicate this too much, but you could do that on your own. Find the industry ratios for all these um, all these ratios in this industry and, and, and put them in and certainly you have a better comparison. So let's move on to the next one and let's do inventory turnover. Okay, so what we want to do here is um, divide our inventory by our average daily set, our average daily cost of sales. So let's do that. Okay, so first thing we got to do is put in our inventory. And we already know our inventory is our 35,673. So let's put in our equal sign and our 35,673. And we're going to divide that by our average daily sales, which we can pick up from our income statement, which I showed you earlier. And if we come down here to cost of goods sold, you see for 2010 we had 298,629. We're going to put that in. And we're going to divide that by the number of days in the year, which is 365. And we're going to close our parentheses because we want to do that operation first to get the average daily cost of sales. And that will give us our inventory turnover of 43.6 times. Okay, So that's how many times we sold inventory within the year. Let's go back and do 2009. We're going to do the same thing. Put in our equal sign. We've got to come up here and go back to our inventories. And for uh, 2009, we've got a number of 51,400,000. And we're going to divide that by our cost of sales divided by um, the number of days in the year. So let's find our cost of goods sold, which is for 2009, 425, 323, and we'll put that in. 425, 323, and again we're going to divide that by the number of days in the year, 365, close our parens, hit enter, and you can see we turned over inventory 44.11 times in 2009. So here we're going the opposite direction because the more often you turn over inventory the better generally and um, so there was a decline this time okay so um, we're gonna do one more and then we'll move on to something else uh, let's do the average collection period and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, find out what our accounts receivable are and again, 
you're going to find that on the balance sheet under current assets and if we go to 2010 we have 45 million 018 and we can put that in here 45 million 018 and we're going to divide that by our average daily sales and if we come back down into the income statement we have total sales for 2010 for of 393 million 185 and so we can put that in 393 185 and again we want to divide by 365 because that's the number of days in here and if we hit enter we have our average collection period of 41.79 days in, the, in other words that's how long it takes to collect our receivables okay for 2010 so let's do 2009 and see how it was in 2009 okay, we gotta come back up and pick up our accounts receivable from the balance sheet accounts receivable is 61412 for 2009 so let's put that in 61412 divided by our sales on the income statement which for 2009 was 586.81 so let's put that in put in our parentheses 580.681 divided by 365 close our parentheses okay and so it only took 38.6 days in 2009 in order to collect our receivables so, so we did better in 2009 than we did in 2010. Okay. So I'm going to end here and uh, I'll see you in the next video.